When it comes to any professionally built race car, the wiring harness assembly is one of those critical components. Generally when it comes to fault finding problems on a car, it does come down to the wiring as the most common cause of grief. So when we're building a car from the ground up, a reliable wiring harness is one of those key aspects. We want to know that that wiring harness is something that we can rely on and it's not going to give us any grief over the long term. However, it's really hard to find solid information on how to correctly construct a professional motorsport harness. We're here with Zach from Motorsports Electronics to find out exactly what does go into a professional motorsport harness. But Zach, because it is so difficult to find solid information on professional motorsport wiring and also it is quite far removed from general auto electrical practices, can we start by letting us know how you actually got into this field? Sure, yeah. When I uh, lived in Ohio previously, I was doing most of the fabrication stuff over there. Uh, when I moved to California, my business partner Tim was working for a separate company. And uh, when I first had, had uh, got on there, basically their practices weren't down to a science, but they knew what they wanted to do. So Tim kind of put me on some material uh, through RB Racing's website and a few uh, aerospace type uh, documentation. And so I kind of read through that for a while you know, practiced every day as I was working and we kind of nailed it down and uh, just ran with it. So I think that's, uh, that's probably how a lot of people who are currently getting into motorsport wiring are learning. That particular RB Wiring website that you mentioned uh, is very popular and there are some official documents from TE Connectivity on best practice. However, uh, it does require a little bit of uh, sort of testing practice to, to really develop it. The, uh, the best practice that they talk about doesn't really give you too much hands-on instruction into exactly how to go about it. Would that be fair? Of course, yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything's fine-tuned and there's a lot of worksheets that we use and it has a lot of formulas and stuff like that that help during the process. And so fine-tuning those, you know, day after day, you know, even to this day, we're still fine-tuning those documents and, and it's just so helpful and it speeds things up and just makes it easier for everyone involved. Now there's obviously a million things that we could delve into here so I want to try and uh, touch on a few of what I'd consider to be the key aspects and let's start with the wire. So again there's some significant differences between the motorsport grade wire that we use uh, in what's now become sort of known as mill spec. Uh, so the, the wire that we use for a mill spec harness versus what would be used in a typical OE style automotive harness. So can you tell us about those differences? Yeah, sure. So the tough cell wire that we use, it, it's uh, a little more resistant to heat than you would find in a normal harness. So when you're using these high temp materials like the heat shrink and whatnot, even shrinking those, you'll find that some of the TXL wire or, you know, lower quality automotive wire will actually melt a lot easier and faster. And so using good quality har harness material goes a long way in the production. And the other aspect with the Tefsa wire, the uh, professional motorsport wire that you use, the insulation is also thinner so this results in a bundle size that's smaller and also in motorsport weights everything so it reduces the weight, would that be fair? That's, yeah, absolutely fair to say. Uh, it's, it's a huge thing and, and even with the DR25 we, we usually use the thin wall material as well, save every bit we can. Now on top of that, once we've dealt with the wiring there, or the wire that you're using, I want to talk about the technique of concentric twisting. So this is another thing we're seeing pop up, uh, some great photos all across Instagram in particular of guys producing these beautiful concentrically twisted harnesses. It's a technique that's difficult to master. What I want to talk about here though is uh, what are the advantages of a concentrically twisted harness? The main thing that I would say that you get is the strain relief from it. You know, every single wire in the in the bundle has no more stress than the other wire, on a you know a deviation scale. But for the most part, that's the the main factor that I have. Uh, you know, you get much more flexibility when you're trying to round a corner that's sharp in a race car. You kind of want to be able to bend that without worrying about stressing any of the wires inside, and uh, it makes everything so much cleaner, easier to install the sheathing. It's just there's so many benefits on, on many different levels. Now there is also a, a bit of an argument there for, for and against concentric twisting in terms of weight because it's fair to say with a concentric twist because of the angle you're twisting you actually are using more wire and of course often you'll end up putting filler wire in because you need a certain number of conductors for each layer of the concentric twist. Is that, that reasonable to say? It is reasonable to say. Uh, what we try to do is fill out the I.O. as best as we can 
and limit the amount of filler wires that we obviously can put in there, but filling out the harness for future modifications is a huge key. You know your customer is going to want something different down the road, so you try to build it as best as you can, but you can't always, you know. That's actually a really good point that you touched on there, I'll just elaborate on, because with these DR25 sheath harnesses, where typically Autosport connectors and uh, moulded boots are used, it's all but impossible to modify or add to that harness. So uh, instead of adding filler, what you're basically saying is you can add some extra wires in there to sort of uh, future-proof the harness? Exactly, yep, yep. All right, so let's talk about the connectors now, and this is another area that we see the professional motorsport harness differ from the hobbyist level. Typically, the Autosport connector is the connector of choice. Brutally expensive, unfortunately, but let us know what you see as the advantages over a lower grade, like maybe the DTM-style connectors. Sure, so I, I find that it's actually a lot easier when populating that we save a, a ton of time just by the ease of using DMC uh, crimp tools and whatnot. Obviously the uh, Deutsch connectors use those as well, but they don't have a, a, as large of an I.O. And so the, the auto sports allow you to put a lot bigger bundle size into one connector. And so when you're going through bulkheads or anything like that, it just makes the, the process simple. Now you talked earlier about strain relieving or the benefits of concentric twisting with strain relieving and another aspect that's really important uh, when you're pinning out or terminating uh, an autosport connector is uh, service loops again for strain relief. Can you just tell us what they are and how they work? Sure, so strain relief is uh, you know typically about a half inch to maybe three quarter of an inch extra wire. Keep it longer before you actually terminate. Loop it in, it gives you a little more slack in there so even though we have a boot on the back side of the connector that's glued and that's also strain relief for the harness that allows for any any sort of vibration or movement in there to not fatigue the actual terminal. I think that's a really important part with the motorsport environment it is brutally harsh there's a huge amount of vibration going on yeah. so that strain relief is so important we never want uh, the wire to be taut between uh, the, the conductor and uh, the actual terminal that it's connected to. Uh, you've also mentioned the uh, crimping when you're terminating or pinning out one of these autosport connectors and this is another area where there's a huge amount of controversy the old crimp versus solder controversy. So, could you give us your take on this? Is there a place for solder in a professional motorsport harness? There's one place for it, and that's a solder termination for, you know, something like a, a ground termination when you're shielding a wire. Other than that, there will be no crimps in our harness that have solder. It just doesn't work that well. So the point here is that even with a correctly performed solder joint, this is going to end up with a, a brittle interface at the edge of the solder and that's a, a point where potentially we can end up with fatigue failure? Absolutely. So, you know, you, you could uh, be really doing a, a great job at soldering, but there's always a little bit that can wick up slightly higher than the crimp itself and that causes a brittle point in time where, where the wire can actually be fatigued at that point. Now, I'm just going to go into this in a little bit deeper because we know we're going to get some comments uh, that are uh, going to come from all of our viewers saying that they've soldered every harness they've ever created and they've never had a problem and while that may all be well and good in the motorsport world, uh, we just don't want to take chances and on face value really if we're looking at a correctly a correctly performed crimp versus a correctly performed solder joint, even one that is supported, the crimp is always going to win and in a correctly performed crimp we should have the actual wire strands fail before the crimp fails. Absolutely, yep. Okay, so in terms of the sheathing that you're using here on the motorsport harnesses, you said they're using DR25, it's a heat shrink sheath. Can you tell us over the advantages of that DR25 product over lower grades of sheathing? Sure, I mean it hands up the heat so much better. If you have a fire or something in your loom and it's able to handle that much more heat, there's a chance that your, your wiring is going to be saved over a, a cheaper solution. So that's one huge advantage. Uh, it holds up well to a lot of different chemicals and uh, you know there are there's a different few different types that you can get for fuel tanks and stuff like that when you're going through a bulkhead that needs to be hermetically sealed so so essentially uh, pretty much impervious to most of the chemicals that we'll find in the harsh motorsport environment absolutely yep and also quite abrasion resistant which is important if there is any relative movement between the harness and other components absolutely yeah I, I wouldn't recommend the thin wall stuff if you're in a high vibration area where you can't secure the harness but it is a great material for anything else all right thanks Zach for giving us some more insight into what makes up a professional motorsport harness if people want to find out more about you where can they go 
Uh, so you can go to our company's website, www.motorsportselectronics.com. You can also check out some of my other work at zachperkins.com. Awesome. Thanks a lot for the chat, Zach. Cheers. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson. You'll learn about performance engine building and EFI tuning, and you'll also have the chance to ask questions which I'll be answering live. Remember, it's 100% free, so follow the link to claim your spot.